Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I was going over, well, I was looking for the statute at large for United States Code um, 414, because the code we know isn't law. Code is just code. And so I came here and I decided to look up this one. Why? Because I'd already, I know what... Um, and it's, I found this to be interesting too, 40 stat 237 and 59 stat 237, both saying 237. I thought that to be interesting, that they both are 237, page 237. The amendments are both on page 237. See, I thought that to be interesting. This is the original Federal Reserve Act. Okay, this act, this statute hasn't changed by much, but I wanted to see what was the last amendment. Now, March... 18, 1968, March 18, 1968, that's the last amendment, we're going to go to 82 stat 50, now this is important, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, it's going to give reference to the May 12th, 1933 act, now there is something unique about the May 12th, 1933 act, let me say it again, there is something unique about the May 12, 1933 Act. What's that act? Well, that's the Agricultural Act. Or they, they refer to it as the Farm Bill. Farm subsidies and all of that comes from that act. But there's a problem. That act was only supposed to last for three years. Hold on. I'm going to let this pull up and then we'll continue our three-year crusade or our three-year tour maiden voyage one second now remember the act of may 12 1933 was the farm act the farm act was supposed to provide for the necessities of the people those who were homeless those who had mortgages and rents to pay they were supposed to the government pay for that Go back, look at it. I'll point the act out to you in a moment. But what you need to understand is the act was supposed to end three years after its original enactment. At least that was the wording of the act. This is 1968. 1968, I was doing that research I told you all about. And as we scroll on down to the last paragraph of this page, there are hereby repealed the sentences of subsection A of section 43 of the Act of May 12, 1933. Say what? The Act of May 12, 1930. Well, wait. When was this act done? Hold on. Let's go up here. Well, look at that. March 18, 1968. What? Oh, don't worry about all of this junk. This thing, this didn't change nothing of any significance for any of y'all. The one that was of import is this section right here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this lets us know that the act is still in effect. An act that was supposed to end. It's the Agriculture Act. Of course, the Agriculture Act didn't end. Hold on. Thank you. You ready? Okay. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. It's very important. Some of y'all don't understand. I know y'all don't understand. Y'all should understand. Y'all should all understand. Give me, let me get that dragon out of the way. Because he can't be tamed. Not even in five days. Okay, here's the Agricultural Act. You can find it at Agricultural Archive. Oh, you're going to take all day to pull up again. I was already here. Oh, no, this is not the one that I need, y'all. But it is the one, okay. It's the Agricultural Adjustment Act. The AAA, signed by President Franklin Roosevelt on May 12, 1933. <sighs> so let's see if we can go there, because that's what I'll, where I'll take you. Ladies and gentlemen, if and when any executive order heretofore transmitted to the Congress pursuant to Title IV, of part two of the Legislative Appropriations Act of 1933, that's where the legislation gets to give money to people, shall become effective all functions, powers, authorities, and duties conferred upon or vested in the Farm Loan Commissioner by this title shall be held and exercised, blah, blah, blah. This is that Farm Act, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you. Get out of the way, y'all. 
y'all don't see that bar coming in but if y'all yeah y'all should see it coming in. i don't know because of the way the screen is set up the national agricultural law center and they're the ones who put up the united states pay attention to the official title of this act this is called the united states farm bill like i said when we're dealing with farm subsidies I don't even know how it got all the way back to the bottom because I didn't, I, I started from the top. Okay, I didn't start from the bottom because I ain't got to make it to the top from the bottom. I can make it from the top from the top. Agricultural Adjustment Act of 1933. Now, what we're going to do is a word search. Control F or Command F if you're on a Mac. And Control F is going to be, we're going to just look up the word life. L-I-F-E. Life just... Just looking, oh, I know we got the word life in here. Uh, that is interesting. Let's see if it is able to pick up every word. T-H-E. Okay, okay, there we go. Now, let's see. L-I-F-E. It says no life. Ladies and gentlemen, I know this act has life to it. So give me a second while I finds it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very upset that they that they've done it so many different ways that I have to look for it again. I had it yesterday and now I ain't finding it like I was supposed to. So what we going to do is we going to go back one. We can go back in the time. Then I got something while I'm explaining this. See, the Federal Emergency Relief Act was the act of May 12, 1933. That act is codified at 15 U.S.C. subsection subsection um, 721. We're going to pull that up. But please understand, Federal Emergency Relief Act, or FARA, is where the FEMA came from. Okay? That's the predecessor of FEMA. Okay, Federal Emergency Relief Act of 1933. Approved May 12, 1933. Okay? It's all a part of the same thing. We are part of the same game. So, it's Social Welfare History Project Federal Emergency Relief Act. Ladies and gentlemen, the emergency has not been suspended. It has been televised. It's just everybody forgot about it. Everybody. Provide for individuals' necessities of life. Make it imperative that blah, 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 blah. Go and read it. This act is still extant. What they wanted people to believe, that this act had ended. Okay, this act has not ended. The act of May 12, 1933 has not ended. Now, please understand, were there many acts of May 12, 1933, Ladies and gentlemen, the act of May 12, 1933 was all put together by congressional records. So I'm going to let that pull up. This one should have, let's see, has it done it yet? It's only two pages. I don't know why it wants to take all day to populate. All right, got a question for you all because this is important. Where does, and you all need to put on your thinking caps, this is a quiz. If you take this quiz and you pass, you're going to get a prize. For everyone who passes, you're going to get a prize. Ladies and gentlemen, where does Congress derive its authority? No, 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 no. Some of you guys are thinking way too far. No, we're looking for the general public. Answer this as if you were Tom, Dick, or Mary off the street. Where did Congress get their authority? Uh, from the Constitution? Yeah, isn't that what they say? Yeah. Okay, so Congress gets their authority from the Constitution. It's called Congressional Authority Delegation. So Delegation of Authority Clause. So Congress gets its authority from the Constitution. Okay, where does the President of the United States get his authority? Huh? From the Constitution, from the con Delegation of Authority. There you go. Okay, now where does the Judicial Branch of Government get their authority from? From the Constitution, y'all are so y'all are some bright people. I can see the sun in all of you. You are so bright. Okay, where does the king get his authority? 
No, con no kings don't have constitution. Stop that. Stop that. Y'all 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 starting to dim as you like a eclipse. Uh no, uh no no Bonnie Tyler. Sorry, they they whew, they 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 just totally off of this one. Why does the king get his authority, y'all? From the pe no, the king don't get his authority from the people. He rules over the people. Where does the king get his authority? Ladies and gentlemen, a king gets his authority from nobody. He's king. He's sovereign. Sovereign doesn't get their authority from anybody. The sovereign is sovereign. He has the right to rule. That's what sovereign means. The right to rule. Now, this is going to be interesting. Where do the people... Now, hold on now. Some of you guys think the people mean the person as an individual. The people is a collective group. See, nobody is a people. Got to give the people, wow. Give the people what they want. See, nobody has ever understood people to be singular. Everybody's always understood people to be a group. So the Constitution understood people to be a group. We, the people, it's a group of people. It's not those elites don't stop believing all that bull crap. It's not no selective, they stop believing that. It is what the Supreme Court has said in several cases, including Grisham, the common community. That's what the people is. Okay, see? And individuals of the necessities of life. That's the phrase we're looking for. Okay? Families and individuals. See, they're supposed to be taking care of families and individuals. This is obligatory. Obligatory? Obligatory. Like, obligation. Uh-oh, it didn't do it. Wake up. Necessities of life. Stop listening. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. We're going to make this larger so you guys can see it. Now remember, this is the act of May 12th, 1933. Okay. Uh, just pay attention. Remember, this is the act of May 12th, 1933. So we're going to continue for a second here after we talk about this deriving of authority. Where do the people get their authority from? From God. No, the people don't have authority, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The people's authority is inherent. Uh, that's why they call them inalienable rights. They're inherent. Don't worry about it. Stop arguing with me because some of you are so far gone. It's pathetic. This ain't about all of that. That's why I narrowed you down to constitution and inherent C okay the people's authority are inherent they're an inalienable inalienable or unalienable meaning their rights cannot be leaned against they cannot be leveraged those are TV shows so now that we have this understanding Where does Congress get the right to rule over the people? And where does the courts get the right to rule over the people? And where do police officers and every other so-called person we are told is an authority get the authority to rule over the people? Their authority comes from an instrument. You can't go out there shouting this. You have to go bringing this and highlighting this by asking a simple question. Where do you derive your authority? Really? Okay, and where does he derive his authority? So each of you derive your authority from an instrument. Okay, where do the people derive their authority? I promise you they'll look dumbfounded. Now they're going to have time because they go over my videos. They're going to have time to go over this. They're going to come up with an answer, but it's, it's <laughs> no answer will ever satisfy because none of their answers will ever make sense because the people don't derive their authority from no instrument. Go back and take a look. The Declaration doesn't give the people authority. 
Go ahead. The king of England didn't give the people authority. What a king of England. Don't care about England. Don't care about Britain. Don't care about Zimbabwe. Sorry. Zimbabwe, we do care about you guys. You guys mean so much to us. No, sorry. For the sake of this conversation, none of that matters. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, cooperation with the states and the necessities of life the ongoing federal emergency. This is now FEMA. Now people say, no, and you can't prove it. Yes, I can prove it's FEMA. Do you know how we can prove it's FEMA? Because all of the powers that were delegated to this organization has conferred to other organizations and most of it was FEMA. See, it says this right here. It says the administrator is authorized to make grants to the several states to aid in meeting the cost of furnishing relief and work relief and in relieving the hardships and suffering, suffering <laughs> caused by unemployment in the form of money, service, material, and or commodities to provide for the necessities of life to persons, not the people, persons, individuals, in need as a result of the present emergency. Well, the emergency is still ongoing. March 9, 1933 is still in effect. That's what we've been proven. And or to their descendants, dependents, descendants, dependents, whether resident, transient, or homeless. Ladies and gentlemen, do you not understand this is why they have to have social services? This is the beginning of the social service network. This is why they have to provide that. And remember, for the social services, do they not receive grants from the government? You'll see that this program is part of the Social Security program. Go and pay attention. Do your homework on this, ladies and gentlemen, regarding necessities of life and how government was supposed to provide for the necessities of life. You all keep thinking that you have this secret account. Well, I have an account. It's a private account with the government. You don't have an account with the government. What you have is this is the trust that they set up. This was pre-Social Security. Okay? This is where Social Security comes from. They assumed the obligation. Why did they assume the obligation? Because they took money out of the system. Remember, this was May 12th, 1933, March 9th, 1933, June 5th, 1933. Do you all understand? All of these go together. This is the beginning of it all. And they were supposed to provide for your necessities. Okay, no special account. No, no, no TDA account. But you do have a right to your necessities. And that does mean the American so-called dream. That's where this is derived. One car, one house, and one dog with a white picket fence. The American dream. That's where it's derived. The necessities of life you're supposed to have. And education is a necessity of life. You're supposed to have that. A job, gainful employment is a necessity of life. You're supposed to have that. Now, y'all got to do some research because y'all have several organizations that they claim don't exist anymore, but they've never, ever, ever, ever canceled this. They just transform these programs into another. Now, some of y'all, I don't want y'all help because some of y'all don't know how to do research. Y'all claim y'all know how to do research, but y'all don't know how to do research. Oh, God, y'all go watch other videos and then y'all run or y'all go to a website and see something and say, ah, oh, finally, somebody who agrees with me. And then you'll run with that junk instead of proving it. So I don't need your help. I don't have time to go about finding out where this is devolved to and the necessities of life, where that applies now. Because right here, let's do this. Because remember, this is in a code. This is in a code now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this section right here. Uh, give me one second. Copy. We're going to take that. We're going to go back here. 
Federal Emergency Relief Act of 1933. Section, what is this? Commerce and Trade. Oh, this is Title 15. So that's going to be your first, your first clue. This has been codified, ladies and gentlemen. Now, hold on. <laughs> Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Necessities. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, here is where it is. 48 stat 55. So we go, no, we don't want to go, well, that is 48 stat 55, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that, 48 stat 57 and 48 stat 55. There we go, 48 stat 55. Now let's find out where this has been codified at, y'all. Because we don't get a lot of codifications right here. We're just looking for codifications. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been codified in section 721. 721, yes, 15 U.S.C. 721. That's where you're going to start your research. Now, you see it says Reconstruction Finance Corporation. That's 722. So let's do that. We, we got a moment, just a moment. So we're going to do USC 15721. Wake up. 15 USC 721. Stop listening. It says, oh, did you see that? It's been omitted. 723 has been repealed, but 724, 728 have been omitted. Why have they been omitted? Why have they been omitted? Why have they been omitted? Why haven't they been repealed? So let's find out why they've been omitted. This is justicia. Now, this is not law. This is not the courts. These are attorneys. So let's go here for a second. Not saying that they know anything. Okay? Not saying that they know everything. Because see, 721, notice what it says. Defense Production Act of 1950. So apparently, we see where the act has been brought into something else. Ain't that something? Okay, we're going to go back here, though. I am... Yeah, let's do this. We'll go to Justicia. Justia. And give me one second to pull up something here. And then I'm going to pause y'all for a second because I'm looking for something. And yeah, I see what I see. And give me one moment. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in the background, what I've been doing is I've been doing the research I was suggesting you all do. You see, I knew that it didn't end. So take a look right here. Wiki, 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 Wikipedia says that the corporation was transferred from the Federal Loan Agency to the Department of Commerce by Executive Order 9071, February 24th, 1942. Return to federal blah, 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 blah. So let's go ahead and look at this because I'm interested in this. Because remember, the whole issue was necessities of life. Okay? What are y'all doing? I didn't ask y'all for all of the, Oh, yeah, I got the chat GPT thing going on. And so, I yeah, it, it's going to help with searches and everything. So I could just ask it questions. That's what it's doing. But let's get back to, oh, uh, God, where are you at? You ain't supposed to be here. Let me get rid of this. I don't know how to get rid of it. I don't want to go to Bing. Bing, I don't want to go to you. Get on out of here, Bing. All right. It says it was disbanded in 1957 when the United States government concluded that it was no longer needed to stimulate lending. Uh, no. Sorry. Uh, after the war, blah, 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 blah. Hold on. Watch this. The Reconstruction Finance Corporation, a depository for public money. Okay, and the unique thing about it is 15 U.S.C. So 
it may the reconstruction may have been disbanded the only problem is pay attention it may have been disbanded but the functions of the act itself was not disbanded now you know what i like this reconstruction finance corporation where are we with uh, let's see what year 57 52 is what it said that's 53 under the notes give me a second i'll be right back gotta read it oh y'all gonna love this y'all are gonna love this it's right here at the very top it says right here the act of july 30th 1953 chapter 282 i didn't want to go to chapter 282 dang it we're gonna go to chapter 282 in a minute hold on we're gonna finish Provided that title amending section 603, 604 of title and section 459 of title 40, public buildings, property, and works. And acting provisions set out the notes under that section and amending the provisions and set out the notes under sections 98, 544, 45, 34. And uh, this is of Title 50, the War and National Defense Act. Title 50, remember Trump was always highlighting Title 50 with the Trading with the Enemy Act and every executive order he did. Yes, he was, we were, we were under a state of war. So everything Trump did was under the Trading with the Enemy Act. Shh, don't tell nobody. And Section 1929 and 2261. The former appendix of Title 50 may be cited as the Reconstruction Finance Corporation Liquidation Act. Pay attention. Reconstruction Finance Corporation Liquidation Act. Hold on now. Here's the same act. See, same title, different section. That's page 31, 231. Amended this sections. And there you go. Provided no suit or action or other proceeding lawfully commenced against the Reconstruction Finance Corporation shall abide be abated by reason of dissolution of the corporation, but the court may, on motion or supplemental petition, file at any time within 12 months after the date of such dissolution. The corporation doesn't exist anymore, ladies and gentlemen, but the provisions of the act does. Remember, the act was supposed to end three months later, and this is what I do. They may have gotten rid of, remember, they transferred, they transferred the duties to another organization. Extension or renewal of loans. The Secretary of the Treasury is hereby authorized to further extend the maturity of and or renewal of any loans transferred to the Secretary of the Treasury pursuant to the reorganization plan number 1 through 1957. That's 1957 new provisions for additional periods not exceeding 10 years. If such extension or renewal will aid in the orderly liquidation of such loans, executive documents, ladies and gentlemen, reconstruction plan number one of 1957. Here is your complete communication. I can't, I don't have time to go over this, but I do know that the provisions of the act for the providing for the necessities, remember the act transferred transferred to a different part of the government so the reconstruction finance corporation was abolished but the duties the funds all of that junk transferred okay so let's go back and get that so y'all could have that so y'all could know where we're going do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life is? I don't like what life's showing me. I don't know where I'm going. So hold on now. I got to get back there. It's going to... It only takes a minute, girl. So it'll take it just a second. Because... That's the same page. I need the one where... Uh-oh. I done lost it, y'all. The one where I actually clicked on it and it said that it had transferred, that they had transferred it to the other corporation. Y'all going to have to go back and watch. Okay. It ain't gone. Uh, Title 50 ain't gone. It's still here. Still here. Okay. That's what y'all needs to understand. Let's get back. I don't want to chat. 
but I do like the fact that I Bing has the chat, and Bing's chat GPT is not the same as OpenAI's chat GPT. Y'all need to understand that. If you're going to ask a question, ask it of Bing chat, not OpenAI chat GPT. Okay, give me one second. I know what to do to find out what we need to find out. We're going to do this real quick. I'm going to do this with y'all on the phone. I don't want the Refinance Corporation Act. Forget that. I want the Emergency Relief and Construction Act. Come on, get that out of here. We're going to do this right here. Uh, let's see. Because it's the act we're interested in, not the corporation. During the blah, blah, blah. Nope, that's not the one I'm looking for, Chief. Give me one second. We got to get back to where we were. Yeah, see, I did the reconstruction finance. That's what the problem was. So let's do that. And there. And there. Let's see. We don't care about any of that. See, and the fact is, how to apply for emergency relief programs, ERP. So, what is the Emergency Relief and Construction Act of 1932? And then, ERC, and not ERP, Emergency Relief Program, Emergency Relief and Construction, Ladies and gentlemen, again, all they do is transfer it from one to the other. But now you need to find that correlation because pay attention. They are supposed to provide for the necessities of life. And so you want to find out how does that apply to today? And not that junk, not that little hand-me-out stuff that they be giving because that ain't providing necessities. That's not enough. They know it's not enough to live on. It keeps you in poverty. That's not what it's supposed to do. It's not supposed to make you rich. Okay? It's not supposed to make you rich. Emergency Operations Center Grant Program. Hold on. Have y'all known about this? We're in a national emergency. Emergency Operations Center Grant Programs. Now, you're going to find most of these grants are to state organizations. But nonetheless, now you know. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this conversation started out with understanding that there, the act is still existing. And it is FEMA. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I knew it had transferred to FEMA. I didn't have all of the details. So, don't, don't take what I just said, okay? Because I haven't done the full research. But as you can see, Emergency Federal Emergency Management Agency. Okay, is providing $89 million to improve emergency management and preparedness capabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all need to understand, all of these monies is supposed to go to the people, not to these organizations. These organizations don't help the people. Okay, take a look. These organizations don't help the people. So you want to figure out how do I get access to my necessities? Because they're supposed to be taking care of my necessities. Simple necessities. Okay. Now, because they're supposed to be taking care of your necessities. 1577. We're going to go to uh, have you guys look up that because we told you about it. The 77, uh, 721. Okay, this may be said it's a reconstruction finance corporation liquidation. This is that act where they're liquidating the corporation. And it says section a joint resolution, joint resolution to strengthen the common defense and to meet the industrial needs for tin by providing for the maintenance of domestic tin smelting industry. All right, nobody cares about that. Let's go to the next page and see what we get. A neutral parent. Wait a minute. What you doing? I just said one page. You went two pages. Get back. Okay. No neutral parent of any eligible orphan. <laughs> Pay attention. No neutral parent of any eligible orphan 
An orphan is someone who doesn't have any parents, ladies and gentlemen, who shall be admitted to the United States pursuant to this act shall thereafter, by virtue of such parentage, be accorded any right or privilege or status under the immigration national. Oh, this is talking about a child, an unaccompanied minor. Okay, it says that the parents come to the United States to take care of the child. They won't get the rights of the child. Any orphan granted asylum or a visa under this act shall be deemed a non-quota immigrant for the purposes of Immigration and Nationalization Act. Okay, fine. When did y'all do that? 1953? Yep, they were thinking about now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Construction Refinance Act, and I now see what the problem was, why I stopped there, because it went to the top of the page before it went to the second page. All I can tell you all is I'm not interested in the corporation. I'm interested in the act. Okay, the act is more important. So I'm going to skip off of this because I don't know the statute at large for it. That's the problem. So let's find the statute at large real quick. That's Luther, y'all. Got a call. Give me a second. Okay, as always, I did a little bit of more digging because that's what I do, ladies and gentlemen. What you must understand is the Reconstruction Finance Corporation has been abolished. It's been disbanded, liquidated. However, pay attention. The provisions for the necessities of life was as a result of the ongoing emergency. The emergency is the emergency. The emergency is still ongoing. Because the emergency is still ongoing, pay attention because it's very important. That means the necessities of life are still ongoing. Congress was responsible for providing a provision because they're the ones who took money out of the system. They took people's gold. That's why the people will po. But remember, they promised to take care of them, making their junk worth something. So that's how you handle them. That's how you go after them. That's how you take care of them. But until you do your research on this, You'll never know. Some of you have time to do the research. Many of you call me and you communicate with me and tell me that you're researchers. Let's see if you really are. Let's see if you can do exactly what I've been doing for the last two hours, three hours, yeah, since five o'clock, uh, on just this subject. And I started yesterday when I came across the fact that the act was still in existence because it was supposed to have ended three years later. Then we found out it was supposed to end in the 1940s. Then it was supposed to end in the 1950s and 1960s. And here it is. They just brought the act to other things. In times of war and national emergency, executive orders, in times of war and national emergency, special committee on national emergencies and delegated emergency powers. This is the Senate, 1973. This is that document. I've been looking for this document. I needed a, a PDF that I could edit. You see this PDF right here? I needed an editable version of this. Okay, well, let me show you what this PDF does. This one. 4, 7, no, is it 470? 470. Okay, pay attention. I put in 470. Watch this. For example, although... There is no constitutional provision to do so. It has been the practice over the past 40 years that a simple declaration by the president that a national emergency exists is all that is required to obtain extraordinary grants of authority it's contained in over 470 provisions of law. Man, I did not see. This is what I need right here. This is what y'all need too. More than 470 statutes as of 1973 currently in, in effect provide the president with a declaration of a national emergency, thereby receiving authority, like I said before. Where does the president receive his authority from? You see, the people do not need a document to receive their authority. But you all need to understand this document is in pulp tent. This is 295 pages. You had better believe I'm downloading this executive emergency order document because I need it. Wake up. National Emergency Senate Committee. Capitalize that. 
stop listening. I literally had been looking for this document for quite some time. So I'll put the link for this document because I'm certain that some of you guys saw what I saw. Can you see what I see? Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, please understand that this is only the beginning. <laughs> you all need to do your own research. But again, you can't do that bubblegum research that many of you do because that's not research, people. I am grateful that I grew up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses and am still one of Jehovah's Witnesses and was taught how to research. What well, don't matter, it doesn't matter what you've been told, because that's in your ignorance that you made that comment. Yeah, I mean that's I'm speaking to those idiots who are making comments in the background. Yes, I called them idiots because it wasn't necessary. Anyway. They taught me how to research, how to look things up, and how not to just settle on one answer, how to look for the actual answer, how to know when I was being, uh, I was being given an answer to put me on a particular course other than the course I was headed on. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I mean by that. This was where we went originally, the statutes at large. Then before we went to the statute at large, we went here. Now this, everything says this is omitted, that they've gotten rid of that and they, they didn't get rid of nothing but the corporation. That's all they did. They created a company. They got rid of the company. They liquidated the company because they took the powers that they gave this company and put it into something else. Now hold on now. They said that the Title 15 was omitted. Omitted? Who omitted? What you admitting? I'm, I'm omitting stuff for. Ladies and gentlemen, Title 15 may have been omitted, but the, I, well, the U.S. Code portion. The U.S. Code portion may have been omitted, ladies and gentlemen. Remember? The Reconstruction Corporation has been abolished. Get back here. Nobody asked you. The Reconstruction Corporation is abolished. But ladies and gentlemen, what about the Emergency Act itself? What about the Act itself? The Finance Corporation doesn't exist anymore under that name. But the actual Emergency Act, now there are two acts, Emergency Acts. You have the Federal Emergency Relief Act and the Federal Emergency Economic Relief Act. Okay, do you understand there's a difference? Watch this. Let's, let's do it so y'all can see. I'm going to get back off of that because I've downloaded it. I'm going to open it up in a second. Now watch this. Uh, oh, I put the whole paragraph there, so I'm going to have to go to another one. Let's go back here. Hurry up. Now watch what I do. Federal Emergency Relief Act. Wake up. Federal Emergency Relief Act. And the Federal Emergency Economic Relief Act. Stop listening. Nobody cares about what they're, they're talking about some student loan forgiveness. Nobody asked them about nobody's student, nobody's dumb loan forgiveness. I said the Federal Emergency Relief Act and the Federal Emergency Economic Relief Act. Let's do this. Wake up. Wake up. What's the difference? Stop listening. Federal Emergency Relief Act. Now, I said Federal Emergency Economic Relief Act. Um, Economic Relief Act is the Banking Act. Federal Emergency Relief Act is not, see, Living New Deal. Okay? Provide for the necessities of life. Living New Deal. Okay. But the Banking Relief Act. Watch this. Let's, let's show you the difference. 
wake up banking stop listening the difference is one was March 9th 1933 the other one was May 12th 1933 okay you see March 11th it's in a telegram blah 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 treasury secretary nobody cares okay two different dates March 9th 1933 the emergency banking relief act of 1933 and then you have the emergency relief act of 1933 so emergency banking relief and they're both federal emergencies federal emergency banking relief act and the federal emergency relief act two separate acts ladies and gentlemen the eba and the f-e-r-a two separate acts but now you know what's going on here all tied in all emergencies and in both ones congress declares that there is an ongoing emergency now remember, we just read, and I just took the page away when I turned away from it. It was here. Let's see if we can go forward. It's going to take a minute because it only takes a minute. Anyway, we just read where since 1933, there have been 470 acts of the president. That discussion was to continue the national emergency. They announced in 1973 that it was still extant. One second, homie. Yeah, I should put all these together. I think I will put all of them together. That's going to be a pretty thick uh, document. So let's do that. We're going to combine all of them. Hurry up. Ain't got all day. Combine them in a PDF. And what's happening, ladies and gentlemen, is because we know that the uh, stupidity is still extant, still ongoing, then E-X-T-A-N-T. -T. It may not have extant. Well, it looks like it does have extant in the document. Interesting. I, well, I didn't know because we only had a portion of it. We didn't have 290 pages. But this lets us know that it's still in effect, people. So definitely, I'll put the link in the description. Definitely, you want to download this report from the Senate. This is a Congressional Senate Committee that they put together to do research for you to determine that what they were doing was illegal. What the president was doing was illegal. Remember, you have the separation of powers. One power can't tell the other power what to do. Congress can't tell the president what to do. Can Congress give the president authority? Of course they can't. Remember, they all derive their powers from the Constitution. They are not sovereign. Pay attention. Don't you understand? The sovereign has the right to rule. These people get their rights from an instrument. They are not sovereign. But you can't go saying that. You have to understand that, but you can't go saying that. Uh-oh, extent is not here. Okay, it ain't here. Whew, I was about to say, if it was there seven times, but again, this is 93rd Congress, second session, executive orders in times of war and national emergency. This is a report where they did the report, where again, we'll do the same thing we did before, so y'all get it, full seven, zero. And... I put full seven zero. I okay hereby activates for his own use without any congressional oversight over 470 powers affecting every area of government and po uh, private life. Any executive orders or directives which he validly exercises pursuant to these statutes have themselves the force and effect of law okay this is what they're saying about the president and they're trying to rein that stuff in because they don't they don't gave the fool too much power they don't gave the office too much power and now they're trying to take it back 
More than 470 statutes currently in effect provide the president upon declaration of a national emergency thereby received authority use extraordinary powers to delegate the president by statutes. Yeah, he gets to rule by executive order. Trump knew that. Okay, it's just Trump didn't know how to do it because he didn't have the military fully behind him. And he would need the military fully behind him. That's how you do an actual rulership. Okay, but he did not have them fully behind him because he did too many stupid things to make them hate him. If he was charismatic, uh, uh, charismatic, that's what you put on your skin, you know, when, when you, you, you're getting ready to act or something. Yeah, charismatic. Anyway, if he was more charismatic, a uh, medic, he, he charismatic, then he would have been, um, you know, he would have been I. Right. Okay. As previously reported by the special committee on the termination of national emergency, this is the act, this is what we've been showing you, has shown at least 470 statutes delegate extraordinary power to the executive in time of emergency. The following executive orders specify how the president has ordered these powers are to be exercised by the various parts of the executive branch. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, I think you're going to find this interesting. Those of you who know what we're talking about and know what we's looking for, wheezies. In any event, the declaration of full state of national emergency in these circumstances to meet a mail delivery strike activated all of the president uh, over 470 statutory emergency powers. As such, this action represents a good illustration of the broad use of emergency terminology and the manner in which it may in effect authorize powers beyond those actually required by a particular event. They tried to rein it in in 1976 with the National Emergencies Act. That's why the president has to declare a national emergency every single year. Because if he doesn't do so, he has to go back and ask Congress for permission again. So that's why they do the NDAA, the National Defense of America Act. That's what Trump was saying he was not going to sign, and that's what he vetoed. The only veto Trump ever did was the National Defense of Emergency Act. Why? Because he was letting Congress know, oh, y'all want to play with me? Well, go ahead. I'll just go ahead and end the, the bankruptcy right now. Because... We come out of the emergency, ladies and gentlemen. We come out of the emergency, ladies and gentlemen. The United States is no longer bankrupt. They no longer have a bankruptcy. That's what Trump was doing. So Trump ain't stupid. He, he, he knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. And you pay attention. You had better believe it wasn't his attorneys to tell him to do that. He's got somebody talking to him that's letting him know this stuff, and that's interesting because what he did was strategic. What he did not know, did not count on, is Congress overriding his veto because the powers that be was definitely not going to let us come out of bankruptcy. Okay, but Trump could have taken us out of bankruptcy easily. He could have... Um, invalidated every single executive order. He literally could have gone through each one and say, I hereby under my power as executor uh, absolve this order, remove this order, amend this order, change this order. He could have done that systematically one after the other and would have really changed things. They would have said he was crazy and he would have been through all of that, but they would have had to have proven that, which they would not have been able to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is almost an hour of me talking to y'all. I got to go. I hope y'all learned something with all of this. I hope y'all understand that there are laws out there that still apply to you that make things better for you. You just have to learn them. For those of you who want to prove that this corporation is doing things that they ain't got no business doing, this is what you need right here. I'll put this in the, what you call it, notes, okay, in the description. Got to go. Take care, everyone. Adios. Goodbye.